It says, I pray you can uh, get her all fixed up again, but please accept this little gift to help. Uh, it says, I miss you all. Thank you for helping me out in my darkest hour of need. When he first come here, it was he was going through some rough things. So, uh, And it says, love you all, your friend in Oklahoma, Tony C. So, you know, that's, that's good. So just be sure and uh, uh, just uh, remember him in your prayers and things. I see him on Facebook always doing something at his place. He's fishing, cutting trees down or whatever he's doing. And uh, as he uh, tries to survive up there in the foreign land of <laughs> Oklahoma, but uh, he would say it's, it's God's country, you know. So, uh, but still, I believe any place we are that the Lord's in is God's country and His special place. Amen. So we'll just uh, count it like that. And uh, uh, nobody's here for. Uh, well, we got one, but we'll do it next week as the first Sunday of the month, and we'll sing uh, happy uh, uh, birthday and anniversaries and things. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. On the back, there's always uh, something back there that's worthy of your reading for sure. So I hope that you will read that. That's uh, on the back of the bulletin as well. Wayne? Wayne? All right. Let's continue singing by turn of page. 231, Sunlight. We'll sing first, second, and last verse. Page 231. I wandered in the shades of the night till Jesus came to me. And with the sunlight of his love, did all my darkness flee. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight. and billows round me roll however dark the world may be no sunlight in my soul sunlight, sunlight in my soul today sunlight, sunlight all along the way since the Savior found me took away my sin I have had the sunlight of His love The light that came to me, behold the brightness of his face throughout eternity. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight of his love. Now let's turn to page 230. Sing Heavenly Sunlight. Sing all three verses, page 230. Let's all stand for the offering, please. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep vale. Jesus has said I'll never forsake thee Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. 
shadows above me never conceal my Savior and God. He is the light in Him is no darkness ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight flooding my soul Glory divine, hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine, in the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above. Walking in sunlight, sunlight of love. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is Sleep each night. 
Um, you know, we kind of, I've been dwelling, or not really dwelling, but I've been focusing in these last few weeks, uh, dealing from the book of Exodus. And we've been looking at man from above. And we've looked so far within the, the two of the last three services that we've had, we've seen seven of the ten trades that we find here in Exodus chapter 16 dealing on the subject of man. And today I want to finish up those traits along with uh, the manner in which they were supposed to uh, gather it. Because as, as we look at these things, we, we find some very, very close parallels between this bread from heaven, this manna, and God's holy word, and also our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we've seen thus far in Exodus 16 and verse 4 that we find the Lord speaking to Moses. Now this is after verses 1 through 3 where we find that the, the people of Israel have been complaining. They've been murmuring, they've been griping and everything else about uh, being hungry in the wilderness and all this stuff and they were blaming Moses and Aaron for it. And we find here that even in the midst of their complaining that God has mercy upon the people of Israel. He has compassion upon them. And here in, in Exodus 16 verse 4, the Lord spoke or spake to make, uh, Moses saying this. He says, Behold, I will reign bread from heaven for you. It's not, hey, I'm thinking about it, or and we don't find it's uh, possibly or maybe, but we get a direct I will statement from God. I will rain bread from heaven for you know, the Lord pitied the people of Israel. He, he provided for them. And supplying manna from heaven was His way of doing these things. Even in lieu of the fact of the way that the people were reacting unto Him. We've seen seven of these traits, as I said before, of manna, and today we're going to see the last three. And we're going to see uh, that manna was everywhere. So take your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 16. And we're going to, we're going to be in a mixture of verses, so... Uh, and as we, uh, when we find our place, if you will stand as we read God's Word this morning, uh, we find Exodus chapter 16, and we find verse 15 that says, And when the children of Israel saw it, now it was the bread from heaven, they said one to another, It is man." For they wits not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. In verse 31, 
one it says, and the house of Israel called the name thereof Man. And it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Now go back to verse 16. It says, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tent. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over. And he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. Go to verse 36 and it says, Now an omer is the tenth part of an ephah. We'll clarify all this. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we do come thanking you, Lord, this morning. As we continue to look at your goodness and your grace and your mercy and compassion, even upon a rebellious, disobedient people. Lord, we thank you for this grace and this mercy and this compassion, Lord, that not only you bestowed upon the people of Israel there in the wilderness, but Lord, you do bestow it upon your children today in the world in which we live. And it's with that that each and every one standing said, Amen. And we may be seated this morning. We uh, we look and the last thing that we saw about this thing called manna was that it was very small in size. Now, the Bible says that it was about the size of a coriander seed. And I don't know what that is. So, uh, But if we take that into about the, to something in our culture today, we would see that it was about the size of a small pig. But it was shaped like a wafer. The Bible describes. And this uh, pea-sized stuff that they call man, that God referred to as bread from heaven. Now, it appeared when the dew that came in the night came, it appeared when the dew went away. And it reminds us of the fact that Jesus came to us while we were in a state of spiritual darkness ourselves. In the book of Romans, in chapter number 5, we find that uh, Paul wrote and, and, and he said, he says, for God commanded his love towards us. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In spite of being sinners, Christ died for us. In spite of their disobedience, God provided for them. In spite of their griping and their murmurings and their complainings and all of these things, God still had compassion and mercy upon the people. Because He rained down bread from heaven for them. So we look 
And, and we find here in this uh, 15th verse and in the book uh, of Exodus chapter 16 verse 15 when the children of Israel saw it they said one to another it is man for they wist not what it was and Moses said unto them this is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. So what we find here this eight element or trait of this substance that the people called man because they, they didn't know what it was uh, was the very fact that it was a free gift from God. Now in verse 4 we don't find any uh, stipulations in this. What we, but what we do find was in spite of their disobedience, their grumbling, their complaining, their murmuring and things against Aaron and Moses, we find that God spake unto Moses and He says, I will rain down bread from heaven. So in spite of them, He had mercy on them. In spite of them, He provided for them. In spite of them, He still cared about their well-being. And He did it by providing a free gift from Himself to the people of Israel. Now this manna from God was provided free at no charge to the people of God even though they were rebellious and a uh, murmuring people. This bread from heaven was certainly not earned or won like a prize by the people of Israel. This manna was freely given by God's grace and His love for them. I believe that we must see that manna from heaven reminds us of the very fact that Jesus was freely given to all of man by God for our well-being, for our salvation, for our purpose because of His grace and mercy towards us. It was nothing we did, but it was what God did for us. Christ came, born in a stable in the very shadow of the cross, so that He would become the one and only worthy sacrifice. For a murmuring, complaining, griping, sinful creature. And that's us. He can't... God gave him freely for our benefit. His salvation is free if we will by faith put our trust in Him. Now the people of Israel for this manna did they have, they, we don't find anywhere in here thus far or anywhere that I have seen where we find any stipulations in this that God would provide this manner for them if they did this or if they did that. We just find that God out of His kind, loving heart provided. And I bet, I believe that He 
provided it so that they could have in their hearts and see what you and I can see of a correlation between God and man. We look at this at this uh, uh, at this map, uh, and we have to realize that free is free. When it says it's free, it's free. Uh, and uh, freely, Jesus gave Himself for you and I. You know, we 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 we've come and uh, we've had to cancel our our last fall festival and things due to COVID and all that, but uh, hopefully, Lord willing, and the way things get better, we'll be able to have it this coming uh, fall and things, and and as we provide, we provide something to drink, we provide something to eat, we provide free games, and, 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 and all those things, and that freeness of those things is something that it's hard for people to grasp. You know, they'll come and they'll and we we provide hot dogs and and chips and and chili and all that stuff. And they'll be, well, how much is it? Well, it's free. No, how much is a hot dog? It's free. Well, no, I'm trying to get a hot dog. It's free. What don't you understand? Free is free. See, Christ came freely to sacrifice Himself for you and me. Free is free. What a step our Lord took if we would really just stop and contemplate upon it. From heaven to the heckles of earth. From the worship of angels to the wrath of cruel men. From the glory place to the glory place of Calvary's Hill. Christ gave Himself to us for us. And He did it freely. There was not a power on this earth that could have crucified our Lord and Savior. Unless He allowed it to happen. He did it freely. Just as God promised to supply manna from heaven. Now, you know, he, he could have told Moses, he could have in verse 4 said, hey, I see how the people are, are really complaining about you guys. You know, man, I, I'm not going to do anything for them people. They're, they're disgruntled and they're, they're not happy that they can care less. But we don't find a God like that. But what we find is a God that says, I will rain down bread from heaven. I will do it. In spite of the way they are, I will do it. Well, let me tell you something. I believe that God was speaking to you and I in the same manner as he was as he was speaking to Moses in verse four about the, about what he was going to do, he's speaking to you and I today in what he did through Jesus Christ for you and I. In spite of you, I will give you a savior. In spite of how you act, in spite of how you want in spite of the way that you treat me and you respect me and in spite of the way that you may worship me, I will 
provide bread from heaven. Because in John chapter 10, we find Jesus is proclaimed as the bread of life. So we take this. We notice that uh, uh, God promised to supply this manna from heaven. And He also promised that He would supply a Savior. John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever shall believe is in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And we turn and, and we take and we go into uh, uh, chapter 6 in the book of Romans and, and Paul proclaims there in, in verse number 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not a gift if you've got to buy it. It's not a gift if you've got to work for it. It's not a gift if there are conditions to it. It's a gift when it's freely given unto you. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15 it says thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. His unspeakable gift. Now, of course, that's referencing the Lord Jesus. Now, we take that here and we can put that framework into the, uh, the chapter 16 in the book of Exodus in chapter 4 and we say... Thanks be unto God for His free gift of bread from heaven. Same difference, same correlation that we see. And we must see that uh, uh, in the ninth place, or the ninth fact, or, or element about man, we find that it was white as it was presented. Uh, look at verse 31, Exodus 16, verse 3. And the house of Israel called the name thereof man, and it was like coriander seed, white. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. The Lord called it bread from heaven. The people called it man. Which literally means, what is it? They had no idea what it was. We get the idea, I get the idea within me that, you know, they may not have known what it was. But they did know that it was white. It was white for a reason. So that it could be easily identified for them to find. You see, if you've ever been up early in the morning, that the dew is present on the ground. Now, if you go out in your backyard and you look at the dew on the ground, that you would find that it, it's not only here, but it's everywhere. The dew is on all the ground. And we have to look and we must realize that in the same manner we find this small, pea-sized wafer that was perfectly round, that was white, that when the dew went up and, and, and went away, that this dew was replaced by this man. It was everywhere. Alright? It, it wasn't just a little bit here and a little bit there. It was everywhere. I don't believe that God does anything a little bit here and a little bit there 
I believe God goes above and beyond all of our expectations in what He does. Now we can look and, and we can realize that uh, we must imagine that this uh, manna, this bread from heaven, this small, very small white wafer was uh, replaced the dew on the ground and the people, they just, they didn't know what it was. And they called it man, which literally means what is it? Now we've all had some manners in our life probably. Circumstances that come our way that we could literally say, what is this? I mean, uh, we take a week ago we take a week ago and we're in sub-zero temperatures and some of us are going through no electricity and uh, you know and these things and we could have we, that could have been a manna time in our life we could have said what is this What's going on? But you know, I, as I look out here today, I see all of us are still here. God provided for us. Now, a lot of people don't understand, I still don't understand, why some things ended up being the way they are. And I'm surely not going to understand probably when I get my next electric bill and things of how I could not have electricity and then get charged for it but still I cannot understand how we can come in to this church on, a, on last Thursday not day four just not just a couple of days ago, but a week back, and walk in and find uh, a hallway standing in water, and then turn around and turn the water back on and have no leak. Now, I don't understand that either, but I know it's true. Because I was here in both times. I turned it off, and I was here when they turned it back on. So I don't know. That was a man of time. What is it? Maybe we've all had those man of times in our life when we said, well, what is it now? What else could go wrong? You know, we don't need to dwell on that because eventually, well, it seems like when you dwell like that, it happens. Amen. Amen. But, uh, you know, sometimes those are just man of times. We don't know what it is. We don't know why it is. But to the people of Israel, they couldn't understand the blessings from an all-holy God in spite of their murmurings and their disobedience and their rebellious attitudes and their complaining and griping and all these things. Uh, they called it man. God is practical. Amen. His word <coughs> is practical. The Lord wants us to understand His truth and He wants us to put it into practice. Now God could have presented this bread from heaven in any numerous of ways. But He didn't. He presented it as the dew left. It was replaced by man. And it was everywhere. We in turn must realize the very fact that 
Maybe the fact that it was white in color speaks of the very purity of it. It speaks from whence it came. It came from the very glories of heaven. God reigned in that. If we'd have had something to do with it, it surely wouldn't have been, I, I would imagine it probably wouldn't have, uh, have come out white. And it surely wouldn't have been found in the manner in which it was found. But God did it. God provided. And this purity of the manna reminds us of the spotless purity of our Lord Jesus Christ. 100% God, and yet when He was born, He was 100% He was pure. And not only physically, but spiritually, He was pure. Uh, 2 Corinthians in chapter 5 verse 21 It says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He took on our sin so that we could take on his righteousness. Book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 15. It says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. In all points means physically, in his physicalness, in his spirit, in his soul, he was tempted. But there was a difference between him and us. He never gave in to that temptation. But he took ours upon himself. look into the 119th Psalm. The 140th verse. It says, Thy word is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. You know, the things that come from God are pure. His word is pure. His son was pure. His salvation is pure. His righteousness is pure. His bread from heaven was pure. And to the people, his manna was pure as well. Small and white. And it brings us to the last tray of this man. We see that this manna from God was sweet to the taste. We go back to verse 31 and it says, And the house of Israel called the name thereof man and it was like coriander seed white and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey like wafers made
made with honey. It had a sweetness about it. You know, they may have not have known what it was, but they did know that it was small, white, and it was sweet as honey. Just as we put sugar in or on our food to take the bitterness away, the Lord Jesus Christ is the honey that sweetens our bitter sorrows in this life in which we live. He is a source of sweetness for our famished soul. The 104th Psalm and the 34th verse. Tells us, it says, um, My mediation or my meditation of Him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. We can go back up to that 119th Psalm and the 103rd verse. psalmist wrote, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. The 19th Psalm. Verse 9 and 10 says, The fear of the Lord is clean, Enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. We find that what God provides has an eternal sweetness to it. Our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, has a sweetness to the soul that trusts and believes in Him as Lord and Savior. His righteousness is sweet just like honey. We notice that we find in this 16th chapter 10 characteristics of man. And we also find we find the very uh, essence of it. As he provided it, he provided the prescription or the recipe for the manna meal. There in, in, in verses uh, 16 through 18 back in uh, Exodus 16 it said, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded, gather it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tent. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet him with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over. And he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And then verse 36 says, And now an omer is the tenth part of an ephah. So we, we get not only the recipe of how they were supposed to gather. But what it was the implications of. Now, we look at this and we see that there was man to man everywhere. And every man was personally responsible for himself and his household. 
Just like we find in the 24th chapter of the book of Joshua, there in that 15th verse, it says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were in the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, we have choices to make. We have a responsibility. Just as the people of Israel here had a responsibility of gathering the man. God laid out the plan for gathering. We see that receiving Christ as, as one Savior is an individual responsibility. And we also find here that as fathers, we are to tell our children about Christ and to make sure that the whole family goes to church. We, as the leaders of our homes, need to stand up and take charge over the spiritual matters of our families. It says here that we find in, in, uh, in this, it says... Uh, gather in every man according to his eating and over for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. It was the Father's responsibility of gathering the man for his family. We find that in this that an omer, as it, as, as it references here, of manna was to be gathered for every one of the approximate maybe two, two and a half million Israelites. Now we stop and think, it's one thing, is it not? to rain manna from heaven for one person. It's a whole different matter to rain down manna for two and one half, perhaps million people. But we serve an ever abundant God. Amen. We look. So we've got to break this down. We have to get an actual looking at what just what God was doing here. Alright? So we take this uh, an omer. An omer. Well, an omer is anywhere from it depends on who you talk to and who is, is doing the conversion. But it's anywhere from four to six pi. So it's from two to three quarts a day a person for two and perhaps one half million people. So we look, we go even further. At six pounds, that is 12, over 12 million pints of manna a day. And if that's not mind-boggling on you, which equals 9 million pounds a day. And if that quite doesn't do it for you, then think about this. That equals, okay, to 
10 trains with 30 railroad cars a train. And each car is carrying 15 tons a day. You know, it's not like God provided them with a bowl of cereal outside their tent. He provided for them this man that they had to gather. And if we look, we say, well, you know, that ain't nothing, man. But you start breaking this stuff down and you look at the, phys at the physicalness of it, And some gathered more and some gathered less, but it broke out, it broke out to, to, a, to an evenness here. And, and we see that this equal, think about it, millions upon millions upon millions of tons of manna that God rain down for them to pick up over 40 years in the wilderness. That's not even to mention the quail that he sent into the camp every evening. But we need to rest assured that this was no problem for God. Good. We serve an all-powerful God. After all, we look at the vastness of His creation. The billions upon billions of stars and galaxies and things that we can't even see with the most powerful telescope that we know are out there. And we look and we see that this same God loves you. And He loves me. And we are nothing more than a speck of dust in the creation of God when we look at all of it in general. Each day God demonstrated the truth that we find in Ephesians chapter 3 and in verse 20. Now unto him that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You go to the next book, the book of Philippians, and you turn to the fourth chapter, and you go into that 19th verse, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So it was by His riches that God rained down bread from heaven. He rained down manna for the people. Even in their rebellious, complaining, irritating selves that they were, He did. And when we look at just how much that truly was, man, we... It just blows your mind away. 
It, and, and the Bible says there in Exodus 16 that some gathered more and some gathered less. Every man gathered according to his own appetite. Some ate more than others. Some ate less than others. How strange or how strong is our appetite for the Lord and for His Word today? Do we crave Him like a man on a diet? Or do we crave Him like a man that's eating at an all-you-can-eat buffet? Do we hunger to know God's Word and, and fellowship with the Lord? Or do we have little or no appetite about us? We must realize the challenge of Peter. You know, we, 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 we find it here there in 1 Peter in chapter number 2 and in verse 2, he says, uh, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word, that ye may grow thereby. Man, we have a challenge about us today. They, they were to gather up this man. Some more, some less. And it all depends upon how much their appetite was. And you know at times the reason why some today have little appetite for the bread of heaven is because they tend to be feeding on something else. A little child will not have an appetite when it comes supper time. If they've been snacking on eating on cookies and candy all afternoon, it's just not going to happen. Because they've been eating upon something else other than what has been prepared for them. Well, I give you this morning that God has prepared His Son Jesus just for you and me to partake in. He has prepared His Word just for you and I so that we can have an appetite to partake in it. You know, sometimes there are those that have little appetite because they're eating on something else the world has to offer. Like popularity, prestige, possessions, position, power. Some just have no appetite because they are nothing more than just spiritually sick within them. You ever been to the point where you've been sick and yet You hadn't eaten hardly anything for a couple of days and yet you have no appetite to eat because you're sick. Well, there are those out there in the world today, folks, they have no appetite for the things of God because they are spiritually sick. Now, and when we're not talking about unbelievers. We're talking about believers. The unbeliever has nothing about God anyway. But it is the believer that has this bread, this manna from heaven that God has provided. They just have no appetite for it.
So I leave you today to contemplate on one thing. Your appetite. How is your appetite for the things of God today? Are you hungry? Are you willing, wanting to partake? Or is your appetite not what it ought to be? Only the individual knows. Because just as God's Word says, some gathered more, some gathered less. According to their hunger or to their appetite. I hope and pray today that you look, you have a desire for the manna that's being rained down from heaven even in our lives today. Let's all stand. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we do, con we do come thanking You, Lord. Lord, we, 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 we lift up Your Word today. Lord, we, uh, I pray that we've opened our hearts today, Lord, as we have in the last couple of times as we've, we've looked at this heavenly sent man. Lord, and we look at the traits of it and we can compare those things to Your Word and to the living Word, the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I, I pray that, that You would give us an appetite, Lord. Lord, that we would be one of those that would gather more. satisfy the longing, the hunger in our soul today. Lord, use this invitation time as only You can. Lord, help each of us to just think about this bread from heaven that God promised to rain down. And Lord, just let us contemplate upon our appetites to receive it. Page 308. Oh, to Jesus I surrender all oh, to Him I freely give. I find the man that God has left for you. Uh, we'll be back in the Lord's house this evening as we continue uh, there in the 8th chapter of the book of Hosea. And I pray that uh, you have a good afternoon and uh, look forward to being back in the Lord's house this evening. Um, Philip, would you dismiss us please? Oh, great. Father, Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you.